Hey guys, Data Orchestration Guru here today. And today I'm here to talk to you about one of my most requested topics, which is how do Apache Airflow and Prefect compare? They are two of the, I guess, most blown up data orchestration tools at the moment. They're both pretty hot, but for different reasons. Um, you know, Apache Airflow was the OG, first one of the scene, first real enterprise grade orchestration tool. And when it first came out, it was a little rough. It was a little rough around the edges. You know, it's an open source tool, so it came with all the same open source tool troubles. You know, you don't have a central authority. It's not really built to be sold. So the UI and some of the features were a little clunky and it was really like engineering focused. Um, so, you know, people that were engineers, they had a great time with it, but people like data analysts, data scientists, and pretty much anyone that wasn't super in the weeds on data engineering had a hard time using it. Now, Prefect back in the day was created basically as a solve to this really early prototype version of Airflow, um, where it promised, hey, you know, it's going to be so much simpler to use and it's going to be more streamlined with less boilerplate code. Um, and so to achieve that, you know, Prefect came out with uh, a more lightweight kind of version of what Airflow does. Um, you know, it doesn't have the same kind of customized ability, but it's easier for people that are just used to writing Python scripts to just get started by adding a couple of decorators to their code. Um, so that was around 2018 when Prefect came on the scene. Fast forward 2023, crazy times. But in 2023, Apache Airflow has really grown up. You know, ever since Airflow 2.0 and the ability to have, you know, multiple schedulers, have highly available configurations, um, it hasn't stopped there. It has made itself behind the scenes, much more enterprise grade, but then has also really pushed forward a lot of its features and functionality with things like deferable operators, uh, sensors, dynamic workflows, data-driven scheduling, um, and it's gone a long way in terms of both features and usability. Um, whereas Prefect hasn't really changed as much. Um, it still really comes in as, hey, this is a lightweight tool that can be used to turn your Python scripts into orchestrated pipelines, but it hasn't kept releasing new features to at the same rate that Apache Airflow has um, because it just simply doesn't have as many developers. You've got something like 5,000 developers on Apache Airflow um, and, you know, Prefect being a closed source company only has maybe a couple hundred people working on it. Um, and they may or may not have gone through large layoffs in their product organization recently as well. So who knows how many people are working on it today. Um, so I promise I'm not being biased, just trying to illustrate kind of where, you know, both of these tools are at right now. Prefect is a private company and that comes with all the trials and tribulations of being a private company. Apache Airflow is an open source driven product. And as a result, it has some of the issues of open source. You know, it doesn't really have a centralized planning committee. Um, so today what we're gonna do is really go deep on the comparison between these two products um, and tell you, hey, which one is best for your use case? Um, so without further ado, let's dive in. So the first major difference between Airflow and Prefect is really in how you'll define workflows with them. Um, so Airflow uses code base definitions, which most people are pretty familiar with, um, whereas Prefect will use YAML or JSON configuration files, which if you're not used to working with them, they can be, be a little obtuse. Um, to kind of show you what I mean, so this is a sample Airflow workflow, so where you have you know, your SQL commands using the SQL SDK, um, you have your um, data frames, which are you just Python scripts with a tag using the TaskFlow API on them to define them as tasks. Um, and then you just define all the relationships down here using simple bit mapping or chain functions or functional grouping. Because it's all defined as code at the Python level, you get a lot of flexibility in defining, hey, how do you want the relationships between tasks to be defined? And what I mean by that is, let's say, you know, you want one task to be a branch operator that could filter into nine different tasks based on the conditions set within there. That's really easy to do with Airflow, whereas within Prefect, doing some of those more complex scheduling workflows are a little harder because you're constrained to the definition you have set in the YAML file. Um, and so if we go over to look at a Prefect YAML file, this is an example of what you need to define just to run uh, catfact, which is a very simple Python file that just pulls catfacts from a database. 
um, with this, let's say I'm running into my local machine, I need to set a name for this deployment, um, set a worker queue for it, uh, set all these parameters, say that I want to install Python and the prefect engine, actually in the worker that's gonna be running this. Oh, and you need to bring in your own infrastructure to actually run this. Um, and then here, finally, I'm getting to actually defining the flow, saying where I'm going to go find this file that I've created. Then I have to create a separate file to actually store those Python commands that I'm using, um, that I'm also defining a way to access it via the op their open API schema. Um, so there's a lot more extra work outside of just actually writing the Python tasks and then running them with Airflow. Um, you really need to have your Python tasks all already split up in separate files or being managed somewhere, and then you have this YAML file that will chain them together. Um, and so if you're comfortable working with the YAML files, that's great. Um, but if you're not, it is really a steep learning curve here to kind of understand you know, how to run these workflows, especially when you expand past you know, just a couple Python files and you start bringing in other use cases in conjunction with them. Um, so second one that's kind of similar to this is dynamic workflows. So with you can have dynamic DAG generating tasks. So you can have a ta you know, DAG like Databricks, which can actually generate tasks um, using a for loop um, that will generate a task for you know, every Databricks notebook that you wanna run it through their run IDs. Um, and so you have a lot of flexibility, you know, not only in doing things, you know, saying, hey, I wanna generate X number of pipelines for X number of customers, um, this can be useful when you have those kind of dynamic amounts of tasks uh, that you don't know ahead of time. You just want the code to handle, hey, no matter how many tasks, handle it. Um, the other contrasting point to that with Prefect is there's no real functionality for our dynamic workflows. Um, once a workflow is in progress, it really is just kind of a cron scheduling tool where each of those workflows is gonna run one after the other, um, but there's not gonna be any kind of scenario where, hey, you know, based on one task generate X number of tasks after that. You are locked to the definition that you inscribe within this YAML file. So it's not something that can be generated on the fly using Pythonic-esque logic because Python isn't actually the vehicle for orchestrating the workflow, this YAML file is. Now, another big differentiator between Airflow and Prefect, but not really, once you kind of come get down to nut the nuts and bolts of it, is the UI. Um, so with Airflow, you do have kind of a you know legacy mid early 2010s uh, look to it where it's a little archaic. However, even though it doesn't have the fanciest graphics and it's got some flat color schemes uh, and your UX designers might not like it, it really does have a lot of great functionality baked in here, especially with the release of this grid view. Um, so if I go in to look at a particular workflow, you know, I can easily look through historical runs, uh, how long they're taking, go immediately into the log, look at rendered code, and have a lot of flexibility here in my workflows. Um, and you really just get a ton of information about to understand, hey, what's happening under the hood um, within this workflow, within these DAGs. And so it's really powerful. Um, even though it's not super pretty, there is a ton of information here and it's all easily exportable um, because it all is just, you know, Python folders under the hood um, and only getting better. You know, there recently was a review to actually sort by data sets. So you can look through different data sets and look at the scheduling based on them. Um, now, the counterpoint to this is Prefect. Prefect has a pretty poppy uh, interface. So, you know, a lot of high tech coloring, um, you know, it is very pretty to look at, but there's not as much granularity in, in information. So, you know, I can look at my different flows that happened, um, but it doesn't give me, you know, any at a glance info on what's actually going on here. I have to click into a particular flow, then go into a particular flow run. Then I can look at a task was actually done, but it doesn't tell me how long it took. It doesn't give me any information about what happened within the task. Um, it just gives me any logs and any outputs. And as you can see, there's no logs really. Um, so there's not as much information here, whereas it might look pretty at a glance, doesn't, isn't actually that powerful to use in practice. Um, and so that's kind of, you know, the counterbalance between the two. Prefect is really flashy and looks really pretty, 
on the surface, but when you get in there, it's a little bit hollow. There's not as much functionality here um, in the UI. Uh, whereas Airflow, not super pretty on the surface, but you get a lot of really deep functionality and information about the workflows that you're running from here. Um, so that's monitoring and the UI. Now let's move on to scalability. Um, so with scalability, what I like to think about it is, hey, you know, which one is going to have the widest breadth of tools available for you to use and is also designed for the enterprise. So Airflow is really architected to run on distributed cloud computing, um, you know, with all of its different compute nodes, it's almost purpose built for something like a Kubernetes cluster. And that's why almost every managed offering of Airflow runs on Kubernetes. Um, so it's really useful and really easy to get set up. Um, you know, once you are you either using a managed offering or just installing it locally, you know, it can run on pretty much any hardware. Um, and there's a rich ecosystem around it. So if I go to this astronomer registry here, this will actually show me, you know, hey, how many different modules are in, incorporated in Airflow. And modules, you can think of them as basically integrations for different tools. So, you know, something like Amazon has different sensors, hooks, um, to interact with something like an EC2 instance, um, and all of them within Airflow. So there's a massive community built up around Airflow, you know, it's like 9 million downloads a month, but then also a lot of other companies because of Airflow's prevalence are building their own connectors and integrations for Airflow and releasing them to you. So you don't really need to worry about building anything. It's a lot of it's available out of the box. Um, you just need to download it and you can get started interacting with whatever kind of systems you're using. Um, and that's also the beauty of Airflow being open source is it has so many different committers, so many different people working on it, that it really gets that inertia of having all these developers working on it and compounding each other's growth through kind of a flywheel effect. Um, as you know, more developers begets more developers as we all know and love. Um, and so Prefect, because it is a closed source company, doesn't have anywhere near the same number of integrations. Um, it doesn't have outside parties really coming in and building their own integrations for Prefect. Um, and if we look at how many integrations Prefect actually has, so getting on their website here with a quick cut, just to ease out some of my Google foo, um, you have their collections catalog. And within here you have about, let's see, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 46 different packages. Um, so a far sight from the over a thousand providers with uh, Airflow. Um, and you'll notice also here, most of these are maintained by Prefect. So you can see here, you know, who it's maintained by. So it doesn't nearly have the diversity of producers that are actually building for this ecosystem. So if you want to do things that are maybe a little bespoke or little things off the beaten path, like interact with lesser known databases, you're going to have to build it yourself on Prefect. Um, so even something like a Mongo database, right? One of the most common databases, it's not available at Prefect. You just don't have an option as a provider. So you're going to have to build that yourself versus, you know, Airflow has, I think like a dozen different ways you can interact with Mongo. Um, and it's not just me cherry picking examples, choose the database of your choice or the tool of your choice, see if they have an Airflow operator and then see if they have a Prefect operator. Um, so real difference in you know the size of the ecosystems here and the scale of them. So those are kind of the main differences between Prefect and Airflow. You know, I could talk all day around all of this, um, but I think I kind of covered most of the major value points. So I think to kind of summarize, let's talk about the, some of the advantages each offers. Um, Prefect allows you to get started from an earlier point. So, you know, if, if you are really new or really deep in YAML files, um, Prefect provides a pretty easy to use dashboard. It has, you know, a lot of hand guides to kind of, you know, lead you along to show you how to use it. Um, versus Airflow, you know, it's an open source. You're going to be reading a lot of blogs, maybe taking some certification courses by the wonderful Mark Lamberti. Um, but once you get started, Prefect might be easier to get started with, but Airflow really is where you want to be for production grade workflows. 
Um, it has a much larger ecosystem. Um, it has a much more active community of developers. Um, you know, again, thousands versus maybe 100 or 200. Um, you have much more flexibility in defining the logic of your actual workflows. Um, and you can generate dynamic workflows. Catch that quick cut there. Um, so you have a lot more flexibility, you know, hey, if I want to have a task that leads into any number of tasks based on any number of logic that I can write into the code there within Python, just as I would write a Python function, Prefect doesn't have that. You have really rigid workflow definitions from that YAML file uh, that are just designed to basically take your Python scripts that you've written and run them in a certain order. So that's why it's easier to get started with Prefect because you just need to have Python scripts that you're ready to say, I want to run these in order. But once you're actually defining enterprise workflows where you need to say, hey, you know, based on this data source, whenever it is lands at a certain point um, in, let's say, an S3 bucket, then trigger a workflow based off of that, no matter what time. So you don't have to stick to the rigid time-based cron scheduling of your, you can actually now move into the 21st century where you're doing data-driven scheduling, you're basing it on state changes, basing it on things that are actually happening so that your workflows aren't as rigid and so that when something goes wrong, your workflows are built to handle that. You know, they're not stuck to a particular schedule where they're just gonna run and fail. They are going to be data designed, um, data forward, and it's all, again, as code. And we know code is the ultimate abstraction here at the database data orchestration guru shop. Um, so in conclusion, Prefect has some flash new features and can be really easy if you're just trying to have pre uh, Python scripts run on a certain time. But if you're trying to do enterprise grade workflows where you know, you're pulling from any number of data sources, doing any number of operations, and you wanna do it in a scalable and reliable way, uh, and not to mention dynamically with full flexibility to build your workflows as you wanna build them. So you're not stuck in that kind of gooey experience of old. You're gonna to wanna to go with Airflow. Um, it is just the much more powerful tool and much more flexible tool of the two. Um, and so no surprise, I mean, this is an Airflow hosted channel, but I'm gonna say Airflow has run, won the war against Prefect. Um, so I hope you learned something today. I hope you had a good one. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe. Whether you love Prefect or Airflow, I would love to have you on this channel. Um, and so have a good one, goodbye.